During his press conference on New York's, quote, insane, that's what he called it, criminal justice system yesterday, Mayor Eric Adams used the example from just last week, a teenager, you see on camera here, beating a New York City police officer in a subway station. This was three days after being released without bail for a robbery arrest. So will these laws actually change? Let's ask someone very familiar with fighting crime here in the Big Apple, former NYPD officer, John Cardillo and conservative commentator. John, I gotta say, man, uh, the speech that they gave where they laid out these numbers, it was, it was real deal. I mean, they're, they're finally, it sounds like, seeing the reality. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, how can they not? I mean, uh, Lee Zeldin, uh, a gubernatorial candidate in New York, a U.S. congressman, somebody tries to stab him at a rally with, with cameras and police and security. We're seeing crime infiltrate areas of the city that we haven't seen an infiltrate since the late 80s, early 90s. You know, Times Square, Rudy Giuliani cleaned up Times Square. Central Park is dangerous again. I was in, uh, I hadn't been to New York City in a while, Buck, and, and a few weeks back, I had a fly to Europe. So I came in on a Sunday evening and I was at a hotel downtown near Wall Street, had to walk to the drugstore to get some last minute things for the trip. And I was shocked. It reminded me of when I came out of the police academy under David Dinkins, pre-Giuliani. Homeless people, uh, drug addicts, hypodermic syringes in the doorways of buildings in what is an otherwise affluent or class A professional building area. Haven't seen this in 30 some odd years. Didn't think we'd ever see it again. And I think Adams is smart enough to realize, even if he is woke as hell, he's smart enough to realize that without law and order, you don't have commerce. And without commerce, New York City becomes Baltimore or Detroit. According to the MIPD, John, one of the worst repeat offenders that they cited in that press conference has been arrested 101 times, including 88 just since bail reform in 2020. I, it, this is amazing. Somehow, these progressive prosecutors, these social justice woke DAs managed to either, well, they convince people as well as being convinced themselves, apparently, that people are going away for years for stealing a candy bar. In realityville, and now as we see here in New York City, you get somebody arrested a hundred times for a whole range of crimes, including felonies. Feels like the criminal justice system's going a little easy on some folks. Yeah, it's non-existent, right? I mean, look, people need to understand and it's been discussed ad nauseum, but your audience needs to understand how dangerous the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's behavior is. So he's prosecuting. If you pull out a gun in New York City and you rob someone at gunpoint, a family with young children, as long as you don't injure anybody, that's not being prosecuted as a robbery first degree, a felony armed robbery. That's being prosecuted as a petty larceny. That means if you stick the gun in the face of a child as you rob their parents, you're being charged the same as you would if you walked into Walgreens and shoplifted a bottle of shampoo. It is beyond insanity, Buck. And all it's doing is enabling the criminals. They know that nothing is going to happen to them, and it is free reign on the victims. He is a thug coddler, Alvin Bragg, like too many other Soros-funded woke prosecutors around the country.